the clone troopers of the Grand Army of the Republic might just make up the coolest fictional army, dare I say, ever. For as many individual clones as there are, there seems to be just as many different variations and classes which fulfilled various roles for the GAR. Numerous different divisions and specialties made up the Grand Army of the Republic, with new iterations being added all the time. Today we'll be going over every single clone trooper class, variant, and type in Star Wars. Now, before we get started, I must mention today's video will focus strictly on the Republic's clone troopers. Clones who served strictly during the reign of the Galactic Empire, such as the Purge Troopers, will be saved for a video we'll be making on every Stormtrooper variant in the near future. Let us know in the comments if you're excited for that, and make sure to subscribe so you don't miss it. We begin with the standard Clone Trooper, the most common variant which made up the backbone of the army. Clone Troopers were grown on the planet Kamino at the request of Jedi Master and Council Member sifo Dyas, who foresaw the coming conflict, though the rest of the Jedi Council disagreed and thus kicked him off. After sifo Dyas's death, the project was taken over by the Sith. Clones were modeled on a human template, the Mandalorian bounty hunter Jango Fett, although their genetic structure was modified to make them less independent and more docile than the bounty hunter. They were also designed to age at twice the rate of natural humans, accelerating their growth and making them ready for combat in a decade's time. Clone troopers would train on Kamino as clone cadets until ready for the front lines. As the Separatist crisis grew to open war, the Galactic Senate empowered Chancellor Palpatine to call the troopers into action, leading to their debut in the Battle of Geonosis. For three years, clones fought the Separatist droids on all fronts across the galaxy, they were loyal to their Jedi Generals and the Supreme Chancellor, though some clones questioned their service, leading to isolated cases of desertion and treason, though most were proud to serve the Republic, as it was the only life they had ever known. Galactic history was forever changed by a hidden behavioral modification biochip implanted in every clone, which was part of the Sith's plot to destroy the Jedi during Order 66. ARF troopers or advanced recon forces, sometimes referred to as AT-RT drivers or scout troopers, were clone troopers who wore lighter armor for stealth and speed and often rode AT-RTs into battle. They were more intelligent and better trained in survival skills in comparison to other clones. ARF troopers wore Phase 1 ARF armor and eventually another model of armor. ARF troopers usually carried out short-range reconnaissance for Jedi Generals and clone commanders. ARC troopers or Advanced Recon Commandos were one of the most elite variants of clone troopers widely regarded as the best of the GAR. They wore specialized experimental armor, being equipped with more components, and often carried out the most dangerous of assignments. In canon, the rank of ARC Trooper was bestowed upon clones who served with distinction on the battlefield, such as Fives, Echo, and Jesse. Whereas in Legends, Jango Fett and his Mandalorian military advisors advocated for the creation of clones capable of handling covert missions too delicate for the standard units. This led to the Kaminoans enhancing Fett's DNA and removing behavioral modifications to create the Null Class and Alpha Class ARC Troopers. Alpha Class ARC Troopers would even go on to train many of our favorite clone commanders, like Rex and Cody, during the ARC training program. Clone Commandos are right up there with ARC Troopers in terms of their elite status. Clone Commandos typically served in squads of four, with Delta Squad being the most well-known. Each clone commando was trained to handle a specialized task, varying from commando to commando, for example, Sev with marksmanship or Scorch with demolitions and explosives. Clone commandos were assigned to carry out special operations that the average clone trooper couldn't handle. These missions included covert infiltration, sabotage, demolition, and assassination, most of which taking place behind enemy lines, making their smaller specialized squads more ideal. Clone advisors worked in tandem with clone commandos. Their duty was to inform the squad about their missions, status, and objectives. Because of the secrecy surrounding these individuals, knowledge is scarce as to their official role as support personnel. It may be simply a position that is filled by a qualified trooper as the need arose. Cold assault troopers are the first of many classes designed for use in a particular environment. Clone cold assault troopers specially trained for battle and survival in extremely cold regions. Their specialized armor was specifically designed for protection to the wearer in extremely low temperatures and to allow for effective operations within tundra environments like the planet Ortoplutonia. Bark troopers or biker advanced recon commandos, such as Commander Neo, 
were trained to ride bark speeders across difficult terrain or dangerous battlegrounds. Bark troopers were equipped with modified clone trooper helmets that directed their attention forward to avoid distractions in their peripheral vision, which could be dangerous to them at such high speeds. Clone paratroopers, often referred to as airborne troopers, were specifically trained for airborne operations. Clone paratroopers were a modified version of the Phase II clone trooper armor that featured a comma and a unique beehive helmet. Some paratroopers even served as snipers. Clone Galactic Marines were among the toughest of the tough on the front lines. Originally known as the 21st Nova Corps or the 4th Sector Army, they were led by General Kiadi Mundi and Clone Commander Bakara into many of the harshest battles of the war. Galactic Marines wore specialized body armor with maroon coloration designed to keep out various hazards such as snow, sand, airborne fungus, and ash with a backplate that protected them from light blaster fire. The Marines were cross-trained to fight in a variety of environments in ground and in space, making them extremely versatile. They specialized in boarding and capturing enemy starships, as well as planetary assault. Bakara demanded the absolute best of his men, and would tolerate nothing less, reassigning Marines who did not meet his high standards. During one battle, the Galactic Marines' new weapon systems failed. Nonetheless, they engaged B-2 super battle droids in hand-to-hand -hand combat. Clone medics, like Kicks of the 501st, were equipped to diagnose and treat wounded soldiers. On Kamino, these clones were given specialized equipment, and the Kaminoans instructed them on how to medically treat the clone body. Their armor had specialized markings, and they carried medical equipment in backpacks. Clone artillery troopers specialized in operating artillery pieces like mortars, though little lore has been established about them. Clone ordnance specialists or bomb squad troopers were essentially the opposite. They specialized in disarming ordnance. Unfortunately for these troopers, their armor didn't provide any extra explosive protection. In fact, the only difference from standard Phase 1 clone trooper armor was that it featured orange paint. This was likely a high casualty assignment for clones. Clone shock troopers formed the Coruscant Guard, and served primarily as a security police force for Republic government buildings and as prison guards. They also performed duties such as bodyguards for Republic officials and as urban peacekeepers. Shock troopers were easily distinguishable by the red markings on their armor. Clone riot troopers were common amongst the Coruscant Guard. They assisted in controlling crowds at demonstrations, armed with shock batons and riot shields rather than blasters. Camino security clones served in a similar role to the shock troopers, serving as a security force on Camino. Their armor was similar to that of the Coruscant Guard, with gray markings instead of red. Clone pilots, as you can likely guess, piloted various starships like LAAT gunships, Y-wings, ARC-170 fighters, and V-19 torrents. Due to having particularly good reflexes and spatial awareness, Future clone pilots were spotted early and brought into pilot training. Clone pilots wore three different sets of armor as the war progressed. Special Ops clone troopers were trained for stealth, trained to move more quickly and quietly and detect enemies at a distance, while also wearing advanced gear that improved their senses. They were known to pilot an experimental stealth ship capable of cloaking. Clone gunners manned vehicle-mounted weapons, artillery, and starship armament. They wore specialized clone trooper armor throughout their service, which contained reinforced components for noise insulation to protect against the recoil and sound of the weapons they operated. Clone comms technicians were responsible for proper communication, making them essential for any army. This is another class which is yet to have much lore surrounding it established so far. Clone engineers were well versed in a range of engineering techniques, from repairing vehicles to performing demolitions work. Clone engineers were also charged with constructing outposts in the name of the Galactic Republic. Clone shadow troopers served as a reconnaissance unit who, with the benefit of greatly modified and expensive armor, could operate covertly and undercover. Using mag seals installed in their armor, shadow troopers could attach plates to themselves that would pass them off as mercenaries belonging to certain factions. With that advantage, they could infiltrate facilities and gather intelligence with ease. Their armor was black in color with white stripes, the helmet containing a unique red visor. Covert Ops clone troopers were mainly assigned to perform dirty work that most clones would find questionable and unethical, mainly finding and eliminating clone troopers who deserted the army. This type of clone trooper was one of the most secretive in the Grand Army of the Republic, as their activities were kept from both public and military records. Clone X from the Bad Batch was likely a Covert Ops clone, 
clone assassins were commissioned by Supreme Chancellor Palpatine through a special order during the Clone Wars. The assassins were trained specifically to eliminate Jedi by utilizing Terrace Kasi, a form of unarmed combat. Through trading duels with Padawans of the Jedi Order, the clones developed greatly enhanced speed as well as an aptitude for anticipating strikes and the ability to resist Jedi mind tricks. After Order 66, clone assassins were stationed at the Jedi Temple. Clone jet troopers utilized their limited flight jetpacks to rapidly cover great distances and gain aerial advantage over their enemies. The agility of the flying jet trooper made them difficult to hit and allowed them to ambush their enemies from behind. Clone sharpshooters, also referred to as specialists, received additional training in long-range marksmanship. Their ability to hit targets at an extreme distance was far superior to that of regular troopers. However, they were more vulnerable to close quarters engagements. The heavy weapons clone troopers provided infantry with anti-vehicle support through the use of rotary cannons, rockets, and explosives. Clone Lancer troopers were clone troopers who specialized in speeder bike combat. They were one of the few clone troopers to have a melee weapon and were only known to have been deployed during one battle. Clone scuba troopers were outfitted for combat in aquatic environments. To survive underwater, they carried a scuba backpack kit that was equipped with a pair of breathing tubes. They also wore fins, which could be attached to their boots. This allowed them to survive for extended periods in the ocean depths of Mon Cala. Clone flame troopers specialized in the use of flamethrowers as well as other incendiary weapons. Flame troopers wore specialized armor designed to counter heat that they were often in. Their Mark I armor was severely flawed in that it didn't have sufficient respirator filtration for smoke but that was later resolved. Blaze troopers were tasked with blazing through enemy lines and clearing accumulated battlefield debris out of the way of advancing infantry. They were equipped with heavy jetpacks and dual wrist-mounted flamethrowers. Blaze trooper armor was extremely thick, a necessity due to their weapons. Anti-troopers were clone troopers from the last production line, brought online by a group of rebellious clone masters who sought to liberate their home planet of Kamino from the rule of the Galactic Empire. The Empire dispatched of these troopers as they squandered the Kamino uprising. Defective clones had genetic and physical defects as a result of the cloning process, the most famous of which, Clone Force 99 or the Bad Batch, possessed desirable mutations which allowed them to serve in the Grand Army of the Republic during the Clone Wars. Before we close this video out, we have to give honorable mentions to the various clones that fulfilled other roles for the GAR as opposed to seeing combat action as troopers. This included the clone flight crew, medical officers, various naval officers, and maintenance clones such as 99. But which clone trooper variant is your favorite? Which individual clone do you love the most? Let us know down in the comments below. Come join us to chat more at our community Discord server linked in the description. If you enjoyed today's Star Wars video, we've got more on the screen for you right now. Also make sure to drop a like, and if you're new to the channel, hit subscribe to join the Red Squadron. Until next time, thanks for watching, and may the Force be with you. Red 5, standing by.